All praise is due to Allah, the most great, the most high, the owner of all majesty and favor. He is perfect in every way and he deserves to be praised at all times of the day. His commands are his wisdom and decree and pleasing him leads to attaining mercy and safety. It is with his knowledge that he judges and with his forbearance that he pardons. We praise him for the blessings he bestows, the well-being he grants and the trials he sends. To him alone belongs all praise for not making us among the deceased or ill, among the peoples who were erased without a trace, among those who forsake the religion he prescribed, among those who make his lordship something they have denied, among those who turn aside from the sound beliefs to which their adherence must be steadfast, or among those subjected to punishments that afflicted peoples of the past. We praise Allah for making us obedient worshipping servants of his. Any argument he has against us is always in his favor and there is no valid argument we could ever have against him. We cannot have anything unless he gives it to us and we cannot protect ourselves against anything unless he protects us. We should praise him for testing us just as we should praise him for blessing us. He deserves as much praise as would fill the heavens, fill the earth, and fill all that he wills beyond that. Allah deserves all praise and glorification. That is the most fitting thing a servant of his can say, and all of us are subservient to him in every way. We ask Allah's forgiveness that we ask Allah's forgiveness for all that is encompassed by the knowledge he has and for all that is precisely written in the record he has. His knowledge is limitless and there is nothing that his record neglects. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner and I testify that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. May Allah grant an abundance of his commendation and protection to his messenger as well as to the messenger's immaculate family, his wives who were the mothers of the mu'mineen, his esteemed companions and all who continue following their path until the day of recompense. My dear audience, I counsel all of you as well as myself to observe taqwa of Allah by fulfilling His commands and avoiding His prohibitions. Taqwa is what keeps the heart steadfast and a person who submits to Allah and Islam can never do without it. Furthermore, taqwa is what would serve as light, solace and provision on a day of return to Allah. He said, there is not a single one of you who will be exempted from passing the hellfire. That is an inevitable matter which Allah has decreed. We will then save those who protected themselves from punishment and we will leave those who persisted in their rejection and the hellfire upon their knees. Dear people of Islam, the blessed month of Ramadan has now reached you just as it did before without ever failing to do so. It has come to you in the form of a guest who will only stay for a time. However, the hosts are now in circumstances unlike previous ones. This guest has arrived in the thick of a pandemic that has brought about a great deal of disarray, distress and apprehension for people and has brought their lives to a virtual standstill. This blessed month has come to people in circumstances that adults may have not faced before and which young ones may have never even heard of. A pandemic that stands between them and the conditions to which they are accustomed, including matters pertaining to worship, employment, finances, travel, and even just remaining where they are. This month of theirs has arrived at a time when they are in more need than ever before of wiping away their tears, consolidating their ranks, opening what may have become closed, raising what may have fallen, and upholding ties that may have become severed. People have awaited the coming of this month ever so anxiously in order to make it a time of obedience to Allah, worship, charity, repentance, reading the Qur'an and beseeching their Lord in earnest to hasten the removal of their distress, replace it with circumstances that are better, make their difficulty a means that leads to purification of sins and raising of ranks and make their state a means of admonition for everything that they will do and avoid in the remainder of life that lies ahead. Throughout that all, they must find guidance in the fact that when a person of Iman experiences prosperity, he is grateful to Allah and his state ends up being something good for him 
and when he experiences adversity, he perseveres for Allah and his state also ends up being something good for him. That is to be done in order to reap the glad tidings Allah mentioned in his statement. Messenger of Allah, convey glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. They are the people who, when afflicted with adversity, say, we most certainly all belong to Allah alone, and we most certainly all return to Him alone. They are the ones whom their Lord will commit and grant mercy, and they are the ones who were soundly guided. Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah mercy upon him, commented that the heart can become disheveled in such a way that nothing sets it back in order except sincere devotion to Allah. It can experience, it can experience loneliness in such a way that nothing can bring it comfort except the time of solitude with Allah. It can feel sadness in such a way that nothing makes it happy besides having sound knowledge about Allah and being true to Him. And it can be distressed in such a way that nothing brings it tranquility besides focusing on Allah and fleeing to Him. We sincerely praise Allah ever so much that He did not afflict us regarding matters of our religion. There is hope of facing all afflictions except those that harm a person's understanding and practice of Islam. It could never be otherwise when, none, when one of the things said by the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation or protection when he supplicated was, and I implore you to not make any affliction I face, one that affects my religion. Dear Muslims, Dear Muslims, we praise Allah that he did not send a pandemic upon our religion, worship or conduct. As for money, it is something that comes and goes. Allah expands and constricts provisions for whomever He wills among His servants. As for health, some times are good and some are not. A person passes through various states regarding his health. Everyone goes through trials and it is rare for someone to go through life without experiencing things that are out of the ordinary. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said any time a Muslim experiences difficulty, illness, worry, sorrow, harm, or distress, even a mere thorn that may prick him, that is a means to having some of his sins forgiven. This is collected by Bukhari and Muslim. Servants of Allah, you should not think that the pandemic which has taken over our world today is something that is bad from absolutely every perspective. There are in fact numerous lessons it contains which we could not possibly learn otherwise. Throughout it all we must maintain sound beliefs about our Lord concerning the fact that He has given us plenty and only taken very little away. The current pandemic has taught us the effect of having awareness about the safety of communities. By Allah's permission, Whenever we remain aware, we would not be caught off guard when it comes to dealing with adversities, when it comes to dealing with adversities and unprecedented circumstances. Awareness lets us know where we need to be looking. Awareness makes us understand that preemptive protection against dangers is more important than trying to defend against them after they strike. When a person is soundly guided in his awareness, he would be likewise in his wariness and he would be able to read between the lines of crises in general. Consequently, he would be successful in managing things and he would emerge suffering minimal loss or damage. Awareness and wariness are two issues that are beyond merely seeing and hearing. Not everyone who sees is aware or wary and the same applies to hearing. The current pandemic has taught us that people are in fact able to live without many luxuries and non-essentials which they may have previously thought were necessary requirements for them. It has taught us that people have been heedless about enacting in their lives a proper understanding of saving. Servants of Allah, this is nothing surprising since a pandemic like this will awaken people and make them enact that proper understanding in their lives ahead. It will drive them to store a portion of their earnings so as to alleviate burdens that the future may hold and in preparation for any adversities that come knocking at their doors. Following that course reflects sound management of provisions as well as skill in channeling stored resources in ways that distinguish between the essential and non-essential which may conflict with each other during one crisis 
or another. A person's livelihood will not stay in order if he fails to properly balance between his spending, saving, and distribution of resources. This should be nothing surprising since a hadith in the two Sahih collections mentions that the Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, said, Consume, feed others, and store some. Servants of Allah, none of us should let the current pandemic be a mere event of history and leave it at that. Rather, it is crucial that we learn what we must learn from it in all realms of life. And it is also crucial that we emerge from it by Allah's grace, stronger, more aware, and more soundly prepared than ever before to face any sort of hardship. Additionally, we should not let ourselves lapse into feelings of weakness, despair, desperation, or fear, especially in light of the fact that we are to be people who have correct beliefs about Allah, His angels, His scriptures, His messengers, the last day, and have correct beliefs about Allah's preordainment, whether its results are perceived to be good or bad. Allah distinguished the Ummah of Islam by enabling it to have a track record of emerging from crises with greater strength and awareness. Adversities are tests from Allah which prompt the people of the Ummah to reflect upon Allah's magnificence and ability in order for them to give Him the due reverence He deserves. Any adversity is like a letter to the lost telling Him to return, to the sinful telling Him to repent, to the rebellious telling Him to be obedient to the extravagant telling him to be moderate and to the soft telling him to toughen up the heart that searches for aspects of wisdom other than the foregoing is one whose greed has barred it from contemplation whose false hope to live for a long time has barred it from taking stock of itself and whose arrogance has barred it from being humble towards the one who is complete towards the one who is in complete control of all things and who grants protection whereas none can be protected from him Furthermore, we undoubtedly praise Allah for blessing our nation with having taken precautions to avert consequences of the pandemic and to remove its effects. After that, we express our gratitude to the nation's leadership. May Allah grant and continue direction for all the very tangible steps it has taken to facilitate paths for averting the pandemic. We also express our gratitude to everyone in every sector for all they've been doing. We pray that Allah grants the best rewards to each of them on behalf of us all. We further pray that Allah renders their efforts effective means to removing current adversities and that He blesses us, them, and all of our brothers in Islam for protection, well-being, and good health. Our guardian Lord is the best who can be asked. He is the best guardian and the best supporter there is. May Allah bless us all by the Quran and Sunnah and allow us to glean benefit from the evidences and wisdom they contain. I say this much and I implore Allah to forgive me, you, and all Muslim men and women for every sin. Thus seek Allah's forgiveness and repent to Him, as my Lord is certainly the most forgiving, the bestower of mercy. All praise is due to Allah for His kindness, guidance, and blessings. Servants of Allah, you must observe taqwa of Allah, and you must also remember that our Prophet, may Allah him commendation and protection, said, When Ramadan comes, the gates of Jannah open wide, the gates of the Hellfire are shut tightly, and the Shayateen are chained. Therefore, you must do your utmost to seize the opportunities of this month and take advantage of the weakness of your opponent, about whom your Lord said, Shaitan is certainly an enemy to you, so treat him as an enemy. There are many people who understand shaitan's enmity towards them, yet they still do not treat him as they should treat an enemy. This is major negligence regarding the two sides of that equation, and it can have fatal effects. The struggle between a person and shaitan would not be an actual struggle unless an individual gives attention to both elements of the equation. Shaitan's blatant enmity towards humans can be undoubtedly understood from him addressing Allah by saying, I will certainly lay in wait for them along your straight path. Shaitan lays in wait for people right upon the path itself, not by its sides, not at its end, and not at a distance from it. On top of that, he does not suffice with attacking them just from the front. He strikes from all sides. He said, then I will surely approach them from all directions, front, back, right, and left, in order to obstruct them from what is correct and you will not find most of them grateful. Hence a Muslim remains in a constant confrontation with shaitan so long as his heart keeps beating in his world. 
It is a battle whose dust does not settle and it comes in turns, some for the person and some for shaitan. However, the most heated part of that battle and the time at which a person is his strongest while shaitan is his weakest comes during the blessed month of Ramadan. This is precisely why there would be blame and loss in store for someone who neglects to seize such a chance. The Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, said, Jibril indeed came to me and said, If a person reaches the month of Ramadan but is still not forgiven and he enters the hellfire, may Allah expel that person from his mercy. Say, Ameen, O Allah, I implore you to respond to my supplication. As a result, I said, Ameen. Therefore, you must ensure that you show Allah diligent striving during this month of yours. Although circumstances of the pandemic prevent people from going to the masjid for prayer, that does not exempt anyone from worshipping his Lord in his own home. There is an adage to the effect that people who only know Allah during Ramadan are in quite a bad state. Similar can also be said about current circumstances. People who only know Allah while in the masjid are in quite a bad state. Those are people who do not know Allah in their homes, in their gatherings, and when they stand, sit, or lie on their sides. In a pandemic like this, it will become quite clear which individual co- it will become quite clear which individual cares to worship Allah while in his own home. In the midst of the current pandemic, this month will contain more free time than before for people to obey Allah. In fact, people of the present time never had a Ramadan that will afford them as much free time as this one. Thus, you must do your utmost to harness that time correctly. No one has any excuse for being preoccupied with other things since the overwhelming majority of people are currently in their homes. Without any doubt, this is a chance that has been served to us upon a golden platter and it will be terribly unfortunate for anyone to waste it. Additionally, we should not say that the situation we find ourselves in preoccupies us from seizing this blessed month of ours. On the contrary, the truth is that the current situation has given us exactly the time we need. To seize it. This is a priceless opportunity to take advantage of while people are in their homes. There is ample time for them to spend in mentioning Allah, obeying Him, and worshipping Him. If anyone thinks that the Masjid is the only place to worship Allah, they are negligent in fulfilling Allah's rights and they do not think about Him correctly. At such a time when people have to be in their homes, they should remember that the Prophet, may Allah grant, may Allah grant commendation and protection, said, All of the earth was permitted to me as a Masjid, a place of prostration and as a means of purification. Therefore, whenever the time for a prayer finds any person among my ummah, he should perform the prayer there. Another authentic hadith states, designate a portion of your prayers for your homes and do not make your homes like graves. May Allah have mercy upon all of you. In conclusion, invoke Allah to grant his commendation and protection to his messenger. Allah instructed us to do so. He mentioned himself first. Then he mentioned his angels who proclaim his perfection, and then he addressed you, the people of Iman, where he said, People of Iman invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O oh Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your worshipping servant and messenger Muhammad. O oh Allah, be pleased with his four successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of the companions and all who follow their path until the day of reckoning. O oh Allah, be pleased with us along with them by your pardon, generosity, and kindness. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and the people who submit to you in Islam. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and its people and weak and shirk and those engaged in it. O Allah, grant victory to your religion, your book, the sunnah of your messenger, and your obedient worshipping servants. O Allah, relieve the distress and suffering of the Muslims who are afflicted. Settle the debts of those who are in debt and heal our ailing and all the ailing Muslims. We ask this by your favor and mercy. O Allah, grant us safety and security in our nations. Make our leaders people who are righteous and make them people who obey you. O Allah, guide our leaders to the words and deeds which you love and are pleased with. O Allah, owner of all majesty and kindness, guide our leader and his deputy to all that will be best for your servants and their lands. O Allah, we seek refuge in you from all ills and harms. We implore you to avert all dangers and harms from our nation as well as the lands of all who submit to you in Islam. Allah, we beseech you to make this month of Ramadan a time in which we succeed in obeying you and attaining your reward. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the hellfire.
servants of Allah, remain grateful to Allah and remember that He is always aware of everything that you do.